Hello relatives, Stutter H. Welcome to this week's Schlagbite entitled Garden of Life for the week September 3rd, 2007. When I was in my 40s, I made my first trip to Germany, my ancestral homeland. It took me that long to overcome my rage and judgmentalism. Uh, this is not something I say with pride, because if you carry that much anger inside of you, it compromises your ability to touch people in healing ways. It was only when I came to work with American Indians that I saw it in a new light. Native people judged me in the same way that I judged Germans. They saw me as another white man who shared some responsibility for what had happened to their people. I resented being lumped into that stereotype, but only then did I begin to look at my own. Over the past 25 years, I've returned to Germany to visit and teach, and over this time I've learned to face some of my deepest wounds and to let them heal. And as much as I have come to love this place and its people, I still get a visceral response when the Nazi memories come up. When they do, it invariably erases my good feelings and makes me feel sad. So I just returned from conducting a healing workshop in Germany with my Turtle Island Project colleague, Claudia Weinsbach. We were in a retreat center in a beautiful forest town called Steierberg, a picture postcard little alpine village, which is the home of Lebensgarten, which means the Garden of Life. Lebensgarten is a communal settlement founded 22 years ago uh, under the principles of tolerance, love, and living cooperatively on the land. There are now 70 adults and 40 children who are living there. There is no guru. People respect one another, they seek consensus in decision-making, and are ultimately answerable to themselves. The community is welcoming, responsive, awake, and there's a palpable sense of peace and love. Each day at Lebensgarten there are times for meditation, they have a daily tea ceremony, they sing in the mornings in the capella, and it's not required, uh, but whoever shows up is welcome. The community sponsors retreats, concerts, lectures, and runs a Gaia University program. In the afternoons, there's fresh baked pastry and coffee, which is served in a garden outside that in the evening times becomes transformed into a pub. The people and place move me. That is, until the second evening, when after dinner we heard about the history of Lebensgarten. Turns out that during World War II, it was a slave labor camp where the Nazis produced ammunitions. The older houses that are here were built with German precision and craftsmanship, and we were told are still standing as solid engineering marvels exactly as they were built. Listening to this story sent goosebumps tingling down my spine and I immediately felt myself in the belly of the proverbial beast standing on the bones of my relatives. And this response, of course, snuffed out any good feelings I had and were replaced only by the ugly history of what happened here. At that moment, it didn't matter to me that nobody in the room was even alive then or that I have long ago given up the whip of collective guilt. I don't want to forget what happened here, but I also want to embrace what's happening here now. I want to give up my ugly reflexive response, which keeps me from being present in, in every moment. This time in the garden of life, I was able to move to that place more quickly from reflexive pain to redemption and joy. I'm still moving ahead on my healing journey. I'm hoping that you'll be moving with me. So that's what I'm thinking this week. For those of you interested in retreats, there's something coming up in October at the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana with Patch Adams on recreating new health paradigms for healthcare delivery in this country. 
and November 30th to December 2nd. For those of you who are healers of others and want to heal yourselves, a workshop in Phoenix, Arizona called The Last Mask of the Authentic Healer. Have a great week. Remember, we're all connected. I say this for all my relations. Miktakwiasi.